Hi, and welcome to another PowerShell beginner project idea video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the simple backup system. Uh, so this is pretty much just like a file copy, uh, but it'll keep all the repository information of that file. So an example of this is we're going to have, we're going to be backing up some specific folders on the C drive. So we're going to be backing up like the entire scripts folder. It's going to keep the entire folder structure um, and also give me all the parent folders of this. So if we only wanted to back up, let's say, the send email folder, we can. And I'll show you how we're going to do that in this video. Uh, so, of course, this is the beginner video, so we're not doing like incremental backups. So all the backups will have all the files and they'll be stored in a folder uh, with the backup date and time. And then we're also going to be zipping that folder um, afterwards to save us space. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started on that. So we have here our PS1 uh, file here that I just named simple backup. And then I also have this CSV file. Uh, you can have it as a CSV or a text file for this because we're only going to have one column. Uh, so you definitely can do this in a text file. Uh, I'm just going to make it as a CSV if you ever wanted to add columns to it um, for any other purposes that you wanted. Uh, so let's go ahead and in the CSV, I'm just going to put in, uh, actually, let's change it. We're just going to make it a simple text file. I feel like that'll actually just make it a lot easier. And for our beginner example, I think that that's all we really need. So let's just go call it directories dot uh, txt here and let's just put in a bunch of directories so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and copy over i want to back up the c csv files i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to copy another log folder and let's go ahead and let's also save uh, rest PS, but I only want to save the endpoints. So let's just go endpoints. Uh, so again, I don't really care about the bin folder for this example. Uh, and let's just do the entire script folder. All right, so we have these in our directories.txt. So let's go ahead and let's start the simple backup script here. So what we're first going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and get this list of directories here. So let's just go ahead and call it uh, backup uh, backup locations file path. And we're going to set that equal to C uh, users in my desktop in PS beginner projects. And we have directories.txt. And what we're going to have is we're going to have backup locations is going to be equal to get content path. And then we're going to put in the backup file locations. So if we just run this here and we go ahead and we look at our backup locations, we are going to see that we have all of our folders there that we want to back up. Now, what we also need, now we have the locations that we want to back up, but we also need to set a location where we want to store the backups. Now, you can set this anywhere. I just, again, set up like a little example uh, area that we're going to be storing. Uh, so I have this folder just on my desktop. Now, of course, as I back up, you would probably put this uh, on some sort of external storage or on a remote server somewhere. Um, you could really have it store anywhere. But our backup location is just going to be this backup storage account, uh, backup storage folder location. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, storage uh, location is going to be equal to our backup storage here. Let me just put a dollar sign in front of that. And then what we also need is we also need a backup name because every time that the 
script runs, we want a dynamic backup name. So what we're going to call is we're going to call it backup. And we're going to do a variable wrapper here. So we just have the dollar sign open and close parentheses. And we're going to do our get date. And we're going to do a format. We're going to do double quotes here. We're going to do lowercase y four times for the year, dash uppercase m twice for the month. Make sure that they are uppercase. The lowercase m actually stands for minutes. And then dash lowercase d's for day. And we're just going to put a space, lowercase h's for hours, and lowercase m's for minutes. We're not going to worry about seconds because uh, the backup jobs are probably not going to run every second. Uh, you're probably going to run this job maybe once a day, uh, maybe a few times a day, uh, but this is just going to give you the exact time of that backup. So now that we have those here, now what we got to go ahead and do is actually go through all the locations that we want to back up. So what we need to do here is just a for each. So we're going to do for each uh, location in backup locations. And what we just want to do is we can just run this here so we can actually get the dot notations for this. So let's just do a write output to see what we get here. So we get backing up uh, location dot. Actually, no, that's all we're going to do because we did it in a text file here. So if we just do this, we get backing up the C CSV files, backing up C another folder. So that is perfectly good. So what we want to first do is let's go ahead and let's see what we have in those file in those folders. So what we're going to want to do is get child item and we're going to pass in the path and our path is going to be location. And let's just run this here. So there it is. So we get all of our just expand this here. So here is our scripts directory. We get all of our folders and our files. Now we don't necessarily see the files underneath these uh, folders just yet, but we're going to get to that in just a little bit. So we see all of our folders and endpoints and our file. So we get all the files and the folders of these. So that is perfect. Now what we want to do an easy way to copy these all together is going to be to pipe this to a copy dash item. And we're going to put the destination. And for this destination is we are actually just going to put um, the backup. Oh, sorry, uh, the storage location backslash backup name and then what we want to do is we have some other uh, parameters here one is going to be container and the other one is going to be recurse so the container is going to keep them containerized so we're going to ma maintain that folder structure and then we also have the recurse option and that's going to recurse downwards uh, that's what's really going to let us really recreate these two parameters combined will let us recreate that folder structure and make sure that we go all the way down. So if we go ahead and actually just run this here, we will see what we get. So we get some errors. And we will see what errors we get. So we get um, container cannot be copied into onto existing leaf item. So if we actually just go ahead and see what we have in our backup folder here. So here we just have a file, uh, which is seems kind of odd because it was supposed to create a folder. So what actually happens here? Oops. Let me just uh, reopen. There you go. Uh, so what actually happens here is it just did not create that um, 
that backup location correctly. So what we actually need to do is we need to write something a little down here, which is going to be if Uh, and then we're going to do if not, and then do a wrapper here again, and we're going to do a test path. And what we're going to test for is this file here. And then we're just going to do an open and close curly brackets. And then inside of the curly brackets here, we are going to do a new item. And we are going to do a path. And we're going to put that backup name here. And we are going to do item type is going to be a directory. Now, this should actually. create our options here. So here we can see that we already have a folder, which is already looking a lot better, but we actually managed to just get all of the files right into uh, just like that root directory there, which is not what we wanted or not what we had in mind of what was going to happen. So one other thing that we actually have to do here because here we're seeing that we just get destination. We are just putting it in the backup name, which is not what we actually want to do. Uh, Ashley, I think that this, just make sure that this is working correctly. Desktop backup storage. Perfect. Yes. So that is good. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add the details here because all we're saying is copying the location and we are just constantly just forcing it just to go into that backup name area. So what we want to do is we want to add a leading path here. And we want this leading path to be equal to a variable wrapper so we have the dollar sign open and close parentheses and we have the location dot replace and what we want to replace is these two little dots here the colon and what we want to replace that with is just an empty space or just nothing in general uh, and then close parentheses here. And then what we want to do is we want to do the test path backslash and then leading path. And then in this leading path here, we are going to put the leading path. So before we just go in here and run this, what we just want to be sure is, as you can see, we've copied all the files, but it just went into that root directory. But if I go into the automate AD, like all my files are there. If I go into these, like all the files are in there. It did keep that folder structure, like I said it would, um, but it's just not, it hasn't kept any of the parent uh, directory information. So this is what this is really going to be keeping as that parent directory information. So let's go ahead and let's do the new item. And we're going to add that leading path here. And then the copy item, we already have the leading path there. Perfect. So that should be good. So now let's go ahead and let's run that here. So that created 
So now if we go in backup storage, we go in the newest one. Now we have our C drive. And then we have our directory here. So if I just go ahead and just open up another file explorer, if I go in my C drive, so it, it's only created the directories that I've actually backed up here. So if we go into RESTPS, it only has the endpoints because that's the file I told it to back up. So it fully keeps that full directory structure, which if you ever need to go back and find a file, you can go back and fully click through it as if it was on your machine before. So it keeps all that real like file structure metadata, it keeps it all intact there. And then the last step to our backup system here, just to make sure that we're not taking up as much space is compressing it down. So the way that we would do that here is the way that we compress archives with PowerShell is gonna be the compress dash archive commandlet. And then we have the path and our path here is just going to be the um, storage location backslash backup name because we just want to compress the entire backup. And then what we want to do is the, I believe it's the destination path. And then we are going to go ahead and do that exact same storage location. Backup name. And we're just going to add a dot zip in front of uh, at the end of that. And we could do the compression level. So here you can set up uh, a bunch of uh, different style compressions. I'm just going to do the fastest. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to run that here. So if we go ahead and open up the backup storage. Here we have our two folders here. So we have our first folder for the eighth and then our compressed folder here. So we can see that it definitely did compress it quite a bit. We got it from four megabytes down to one megabyte. So we've definitely saved some storage, which is quite important with backups. Like you don't want to always keep them full fledged. Uh, and then all you can do is you can just click through your backups and restore the files that you would want. So this is a very, very simple backup system. Um, and I'm not going to show how to schedule that task because this could be something that maybe you don't really want to schedule. Um, but of course, you guys have seen me in the other videos uh, schedule these tasks. Um, and I would say if you have a remote drive or other servers that you can back up to, I would definitely schedule this. Um, it definitely works if you don't have if you don't want to back up your entire system and you only care about backing up like specific files, like your scripts or something, this definitely works great. And you'll have a copy of it every day um, or every couple hours if you want. This way, if you've ever messed up something in your scripts and you want to go back, uh, you can go back and see and restore the file as it was. Uh, in the more advanced and intermediate projects, we're going to start implementing some more incremental uh, backups. So it's going to check if the back, if that file's already been backed up in a previous backup. Um, and if it's been changed, then back it up again. Uh, but that's definitely more advanced. Um, so this is definitely more of a, definitely a beginner idea here. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll have the GitHub to this script as well in the description down below. Uh, so just let me know. And if you guys have any questions that you guys would like to see a video on, let me know in the comments down below as well. Make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.